Thanks for joining us for this Atomos and Canon 8K online event, where we will be discussing the new features on the Ninja 5 Plus and the Canon EOS R5, which together unlock the ability to be able to record 8K Apple ProRes RAW. Let me introduce you to our team for this event. I've got Trevor Elborn, Chief Technology Officer, who's joining us all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Estelle. Great to be here. And here with me today is Levi Allen, adventure filmmaker from Canada. Hi, Levi. It's so exciting to be here. This is a fun, uh, a fun event. I know, it really is. Today we're talking about what it's like to film with the Canon and Atomos combo, how the Atomos team crafted the tech and the benefits of shooting 8K RAW. And at the end, hopefully, we've imparted a few tips and tricks and insights along the way. But before we get started, let's take a look at Levi's short film, shot entirely in 8K Apple ProRes RAW using the Ninja 5 Plus and the Canon EOS R5. That loneliness feeling is just not a good place to be as an individual, as humans. Honestly, like I love our mountain because it really reminds me of like a rainforest of jungle that I kind of grew up in because it's just so dense. They look very unforgiving, <laughs> that's what I can say. <laughs> but also like very inviting at the same time. I was hiking and I'm seeing all these like, you know, different features. And I'm like, there's no way, there's no way people ride this. And the mountain biker comes flying <laughs> past me and I'm just like, whoa, this, people are crazy here in BC. <laughs> I don't see myself ever doing that kind of sport. It just looks too intense. But also there's not a lot of black mountain bikers. So I didn't really like honestly see myself in that space or see myself doing it. But then when people invite me into a space to try something, I don't say no. When I first started, I could barely bike up a trailhead. Like I would walk my bike up and I was like, no, I want to improve and I want to figure this sport out. Going pedaling, working on my pedaling. And then a year later, here I am. <laughs> I don't want people to feel lonely and have that loneliness feeling. That's why I really value community and people coming together and creating safe spaces for people to come and learn something new. I'm proud of what I've accomplished, but I'm also proud that I've brought other people into the journey. I 
think I'm getting a reputation where I invite people to do things, but I don't give them any detail. I just say book the time off and show up and hear what you need. Yeah, now the friends just say like, if Judy invite you on a trip, just say yes, ask questions later. <laughs> Doing all these outdoor activities has really allowed me to kind of not feel lonely, but rather feel like there's people like me who are doing these things and I want to connect and want to be in a community with them. That was absolutely stunning. I have too many favorite shots to actually list all of them, but I think it's really important for our audience to understand your shooting style, like your filmmaking style. What is that? I like trying to create a space where just natural kind of, I call them whimsical moments. Just kind of these things that you feel like as you capture them on camera, you kind of feel like you just stole a little moment away and you, you got it. I like just trying to get to a space where whoever I'm filming in their environment, whatever it is they're naturally doing, we can just chase curiosity and just find some amazing visuals that hopefully end up creating a feeling for that I can transfer the viewer back home, take them right there with me into that moment in a way that, that's getting that feeling and idea across to them. So what I like to do ahead of time is just be as prepared as possible on everything that's under my control. So things like, do I know my kit well? Do I know the exposures that I can shoot at, the ISO value? Do I just know my system and do I have processes in place to use it well? And then so that way, when I'm on location, I can be prepared to get those unprepared moments and actually capture them. Like these whimsical little nuggets that sometimes I miss when I'm too distracted with getting my equipment right. But if I'm prepared ahead of time and we're in the location and something magical happens, I wanna be ready for that. It's like the handheld stuff where I'm trying to steal away little magical moments. And then I also love shifting gears into a more professional production value where I'll throw it on a gimbal and we'll try to actually set the cinematic tone for the feel I'm going for. And then just also make sure I'm actually capturing the real human moments that I cherish so much in the finished pieces. Well, it definitely comes across for the viewer. Trevor, what is it like for you and the team seeing all of this content come to life on devices that you've engineered? Well, firstly, we'd just like to say huge congratulations to, to Levi for shooting such an amazing piece of footage. I mean, it really looks terrific. It's really, really rewarding for the team to see all of our hard work and effort come to life in such a, such a beautiful way. And it's also really motivating for us in our efforts to deliver such great products. Um, and one of the great things is that you're never quite sure when you're making these products um, how they're going to be used um, and you have some ideas around the features we put into the products and how they might be used but it's really rewarding to see when they finally get into the hands of such creative people like Levi um, sometimes you, you, you're surprised the results are even better than you imagined. You've been using Atomos gear for a long time now. Yeah. What was it like being the first creator to take this combination out and test it? Yeah, I just, I keep pinching myself that this is the gear that we actually have available to shoot with because I'm a product of like the DSLR revolution, right? And my first film camera or video camera being a small Canon T2i, I fell in love with that form factor. Like that's what I started on trying to chase that filmic look, whatever that meant to me now. And as I've grown in my kind of skill set to have the tech progress right alongside, is really exciting because now we have the same form factor, but it's, got, it's packing such a bigger punch. And what that means for me from a shooting perspective is now we have like a VistaVision size sensor recording in 8K RAW in the same form factor that I've been, you know, learning on all these years and just coming to love. So this is, a, this is kind of an exciting development and there hasn't, there literally hasn't been a better time to be a filmmaker. And do you feel like you capture more moments because you have the screen? Like you're not looking through the viewfinder, so mm -hmm. you're not as distracted. You can see more with what you're shooting, especially out in nature. Yeah, and it's this thing where, especially people that aren't used to being filmed, uh, 
they, they can kind of feel the moments being up, interrupted if, if you're just all distracted on the camera stuff. And if I can pull my attention away from the camera, even just a little bit, and show them that I'm trying to have a human moment with them, that translates onto screen really well. So if I'm trying to connect with whoever I'm filming and they suddenly feel like, oh, he's just checking focus or that moment wasn't important. You can almost see them like get deflated on camera when you're in the edit bay. You might never have noticed that when you're on location. But if I bring my camera kind of just to chest height here and I hold it, like I can glance down and I can see my framing's nice. I know I'm in focus and I'm using autofocus capabilities with the RF mount lenses and I can just give them my attention and that comes through so well onto the camera that I'm holding. And it's those moments, especially that's the style that I like for on location stuff with dock work. I would miss them if I was being distracted with just like, is my shot framed well? Is my, am I in the correct exposure? I'm gonna nail this. It's really amazing to have that kind of form factor because it used to be such a huge kit. And even then really you only rented it because it wasn't accessible like it is now. And I just love the fact that you have so much form and function. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a 8K, so we're recording an 8K raw, and this system is 5.3 pounds right here. Like 5.3 pounds, that's 2.4 kilograms. I, I double checked the math, and that amount of like power in such a small system, that basically means you could run microphones on this, different lenses in kind of this compact world, and stay under eight pounds the entire time which from a shooting perspective, this is just really exciting. So you started shooting on the original Ninja mm -hmm. and you must have seen this fantastic progression as the feature set has matured and it's unlocked things like mm -hmm. 8K. It's amazing because I think back to getting 4K 60 frames at 10 bit and just how exciting that was to get that in a small form factor. And truthfully, that original Ninja 5 changed the way that I was able to shoot. Having a monitor that bright for me is so critical because we shoot in these log picture profiles and you needed the tools to do it right. It's such an advantage to on location be able to have focus peaking on a five inch display on your camera. It's just, it's so good to like make sure you're in focus, especially as we get higher resolutions, that critical focus plane really shows in higher resolution frames. And so of course we wanna be in focus. And the other tools like false color waveforms, uh, being able to see audio meters, all those things that I really rely on when I shoot. And with the Ninja 5 Plus now, to like have the same great feature set from a monitoring perspective, and now we get 8K. Now we get higher frame rates. And it's all in the same form factor, so we didn't lose anything from a usability perspective, but we've gained and we've unlocked these extra capabilities where now we get ProRes Raw 8K. To have that toolkit available and to be able to like cycle through different codecs is, is awesome. That's the flexibility I want as a shooter, and having that in the Ninja 5 Plus is, is, is great. The things you've just mentioned there, Levi, are actually the huge motivating factors behind the creation of ProRes RAW in the first place, uh, is to give you though that increased flexibility, uh, especially as cameras get better, sensors get better. None of the decisions uh, are baked into the uh, baked into the images. So any any decisions, any settings that are made at the camera come through in the ProRes RAW file as metadata only. Uh, and they are applied as settings inside tools like Final Cut Pro as starting points, but because they're not baked in, you then have the, the flexibility to change those uh, in post uh, to get the results that you're looking for. Yeah, Trevor, something that I certainly appreciated, even when I saw these specs and the announcement originally, was I just kind of thought it would be bigger because you're packing so much more into it. So uh, from someone who shoots a lot handheld, I really appreciate that you kept that same form factor but unlocked so much more capability with the better processor. I, I certainly appreciate that. So what were some of the challenges as you were developing the tech? Packing a lot of uh, a lot of power into a really small form factor is probably the biggest challenge. So we had to lean on, you know, a lot of, lot of years of experience, particularly in developing the Ninja 5, because it represented uh, at that point in time, um, the most power we'd packed into uh, a small recorder. So we, we evolved the, the experiences that we gained from developing Ninja 5 uh, into the Ninja 5 Plus to take the performance that little bit further. Can you tell me a little bit more about the technology of the Ninja 5 Plus that enables the 8K ProRes RAW capture? Ninja 5 Plus is an evolution of Ninja 5. So we had a really good platform to start with for developing Ninja 5 Plus. 
Um, on Ninja 5, we support up to 4K60, but stepping up to 8K represents a, a, an increment in the number of pixels by a factor of four, so we had to unlock more power. And at the heart of Ninja 5 and Ninja 5 Plus is the main central processing chip that does all of the, all of the grunt work. And on Ninja 5 Plus, we did the next evolution of that chip to unlock more performance. And that, that central processing chip on Ninja 5 Plus now has, roughly speaking, about two times the performance of Ninja 5. Um, so that un allows us to unlock the processing power required to support formats like 8K ProRes RAW. So I noticed in your documentary, you're shooting on the water. Yeah, it's a, it's a little dinghy and uh, it's, it's a fun little thing to shoot from when you're managing gear in a space like that. We don't have a lot of room to bring along extra stuff or to like have cases around and you know, water might splash over. So a lot of the gear that we're using, we want kind of in our hands. We don't want to be putting stuff down on, on the boat. But especially that morning of shooting the kayakers, like for me going into that, I had a vision. Like I actually had some shots I wanted to get and I wanted the golden hour. Like there's that window in the morning where the sun's just come up over the mountains and it's got that golden wash. And then we're just kind of like ripping around on the dinghy and I'm trying to just find moments. And a big thing that was helpful for me was I'm so used to like, if I miss framing on a shot feeling like, oh, I, I gotta get that again. But looking at the monitor, even if it's not like the identical framing I want, we're in 8K. So if I'm gonna do a 4K deliverable, I've got a lot of reframing there, which I've been cheating with 4K before on a 4K deliverable, but that fidelity loss shows. Like you see some of that loss of detail. So it's always a trade-off and not having that trade-off for reframes to finish in 4K and have the detail there is, is awesome. Because sometimes moments happen where the water just splashes and the light's coming through the tree. And in your head, you're thinking, man, we gotta like go around and do that again. But if you can see that you, you got it on the display and you're confident, it's like, it's such a good feeling to, to get moments like that and feel, just feel confident that you have it. I know that there is a lot of light splash on the screen that you mentioned and you're still able to get those amazing shots and see everything so mm -hmm. clearly. Trevor, can you talk a little bit about some of the considerations that you and the team look at in assessing a screen? Well, I guess there are a couple of considerations uh, that we take into account when you know choosing the right screen uh, for each of the products. One definitely is the environment in which they're going to be used. So in the case of uh, Ninja 5 Plus, uh, it'll get used you know, outdoors a lot, so it's got to be viewable in uh, you know, bright environments. So certainly uh, brightness is a big factor there. Uh, and I guess the other thing is that, you know, we want these products to be able to capture, you know, deep color, wide dynamic range. And that's the whole point behind supporting codecs like ProRes RAW. So making sure the, the, the screen colors are really deep and rich and making sure that, you know, that comes across when you're on location. So you know that you've, uh, you've got the shot that you're looking for. I love the ability to be able to record in a variety of codecs. I'd imagine as a creator, that gives you an immense amount of choice. It's that flexibility component that's really helpful, right? Because sometimes it makes so much sense to capture everything in ProRes RAW because lighting elements are changing and there's, there's so many benefits about that. But other times you might be rolling an interview for an hour and a half and hey, maybe just doing it in H.265 is great. Or maybe you're doing an Avid workflow and you need DNX HD and being able to just like change those on the monitor and just record those in those different formats. That for me is fantastic. So you've mentioned this before, shooting in 8K means that you can future-proof your content, even if your delivery format is HD or 4K. Yeah, it happens a lot where I'll, I'll go out and I'll film something and it might even be just for fun, right? And I'll get that footage and I'll put it together into an edit and it might be a month later or even six months later and I'll get an email that comes in and be like, hey, can we license that for something? And depending on what production they're licensing it for or whatever, the value to them goes up or down based on how flexible it is. So if I can tell them this file is raw, we can match it to the color space you're in and it's 8K, the value that it has to them goes up. So then what they're willing to pay for the license also goes up. And it's sometimes you're getting these once in a lifetime moments and it's not always that way, but getting that in a format that is gonna serve me for years to come is gonna make this whole thing more viable as a filmmaker for me as I'm trying to make stuff that I like. So being able to repackage and reuse it for other projects into the future is helpful. But, and it's also not even just the future proofing of having content that will be able to be licensable or repurposable. It's also about current proofing because 
so much of what we, what we shoot goes on the web. And web streamed video, we see it in the shadows all the time where it's this blocky mess, right? And that's just, that's heartbreaking, right? Where you see it beautifully on your monitor and then it streams on the web and it's got this blocky mess going on because it's compressed just with an algorithm. But what we do know is that if you give it more detail, it likes that. So if I give a really detailed scene, it's not gonna make these blocky areas in the shadows as easily. So it's not only like setting it up for the future, but if I give a web deliverable that much detail, it's gonna look better. And that comes through to the final result when it's playing and that feels rewarding when it's closer to what you originally envisioned someone watching. In fact, Trevor, how closely do you have to work with Canon to make this whole system work so seamlessly together from a technology perspective? The relationship with Canon actually is really important uh, in these sort, of, uh, these sort of situations. Obviously, we can't bring 8K ProRes RAW to life from the Canon R5 entirely by ourselves. It, it took a very close relationship and collaboration uh, with Canon's engineering team to make this happen. Uh, and they were, they were absolutely fantastic. Uh, we have a long-standing relationship with them going back to the, you know, the very early days of ProRes RAW. So, uh, you know, leveraging that experience and that close relationship was, was crucial in bringing this to life uh, on the Ninja 5 Plus. I noticed that, especially in the details of the mist, mm -hmm. I felt like I could see every single little droplet. I'm so used to like the little branches in the distance kind of turning to a blocky mush. It yeah. just, it almost just looks like Technicolor once it's hit the web. And to actually have those details there, the fidelity is there. And as long as I'm using a lens that's gonna to resolve to the 8K resolution on this large sensor, it's gonna get captured beautifully. And that is, uh, it, it, it makes me want to care more about what's in my frames. Uh, I, I'm wanting to like make sure I frame my shots just right, because those details really do come through and it looks, it looks awesome. And sometimes when you're hanging out of a helicopter, you're going pretty fast. Yeah. And there are shots where you're going in and out of the sunlight. Mm. And I'd imagine that gives you the ability to be able to keyframe a change over time if you're mm. really wanting to bring out different areas of the frame. That adaptability from a white balance perspective in ProRes RAW is one of the biggest reasons why I like using it. Because it's like, okay, we've got our exposure right most of the time, okay but especially when you're shooting at golden hour and you get all these amazing shots and you're trying to scene match them, like actually having that scene feel like one whole moment when the sun's setting, you know, you got a 30 minute window and it, the goldenness gets dramatic. Like I'm not gonna sit there on my camera and be changing white balance, but later in post to be able to match those shots together is, is a really big advantage for me. And I mean, it's fun shooting out of a helicopter and it feels a little frantic, but one of the big things as well with 8K is uh, that much resolution for stabilizing is just dramatically better performance out of any stabilizer. Because if you give it that much more resolution, it can tell better what's actually going on in that scene. And so, unfortunately, sometimes even if I'm using a gimbal, if I'm shooting out of something like a helicopter and the whole thing's shaking a little bit, you might get a little bit of that shutter into the frame, but that's the shooting scenario we have to work with. And being able to stabilize that is awesome. And it stabilizes really well. And are you using the tools inside of Final Cut Pro to stabilize? Yeah, so using both the raw panel to do the white balance changes and the built-in stabilizing right on there to just kind of, those little micro jitters is what I'm trying to get out of the frame, especially because you know, you're in a helicopter. Let's take a look at the behind the scenes and get a little glimpse into how you made all of this happen. Hey friend, Canon and Atomus just released the ability to shoot 8K from the R5 into the Ninja 5 Plus. It's 
So we're gonna be shooting a micro doc and uh, Adamus has asked if I can take you along with me and just share my experience of how this kit is gonna fit into my shooting style. Oh wow, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crew, let's come up here a little ways. Go for it. We're gonna be rolling small and light on the shoot, operating mostly out of backpacks. And adventure filming for me is a really exciting proving ground, especially for new equipment, because if this setup can work well out here and be dependable, I can be really confident that it's gonna work through all the different kinds of shooting that I do. <laughs> Just a little slower so I can yeah. keep up. I'm hoping uh, through all of this, I can end up filming <laughs> a passion project that I am really proud of. And then also I wanna walk away from this experience answering the question of, is filming in ProRes RAW 8K actually worth it? I mean, you're getting to see the results before I am, but uh, let's, uh, let's put this thing to the test. I'm gonna nail this. Here. Would you be gracious enough to do it one more time for me? Yep, I can do it okay, one more time. Okay, sweet. Basically, since its release day, I've been bringing the original Ninja with me on every production that I shoot, uh, mainly because it expands the functionality of the cameras I shoot with. I really like the five inch display because it's big enough for me to see, but it's not so big that it becomes cumbersome on a handheld rig like this, so it can adapt and flex through the different systems that I use. So even before we get into the functionality of recording into the monitor itself, like before we even get there, the tools for seeing your image built into the Ninja are just so critical for me. Being able to turn on peaking, being able to have a great waveform, being able to see the log image from the camera actually displayed on a thousand nit display in the outdoors, you can actually see what you're image is gonna look like. I know I'm capturing it right on location. It's important for me once we start shooting uh, and the creative energy starts flowing to do everything we can to protect and preserve that and keep the systems flowing. And if I find myself getting distracted with the technical stuff that's pulling me out of the headspace of creativity and, and finding moments that I like, for me that starts especially with things like battery management. All the ones that are full, I have them the backs up, and then when they're dead and they've been used already, I put the elements on the battery upwards. We filled up a card this morning, so we're gonna swap that guy straight down here into the full drive section. Another drive out. I like just clear systems like that because everyone that you're shooting with can know the system. It's just easy, simple, so that way we can uh, get back to shooting as fast as possible and keep that creative flow going. There's this like sweet spot of like 30-ish minutes of golden hour that when the sun is at the right angle coming down onto the water, it's like glass calm. And without fail, it's always just a little bit chaotic during sunrise stuff, um, but that's exciting. And we're getting some incredible shots here on the water with the sun just pouring down through the trees. Like this is, this is just awesome. Wow. Oh my gosh. With microdoc stuff, my style is definitely just letting the subject I'm filming just do what they're doing. I, I don't tend to coordinate things very much. Um, and this, this helps me kind of get those natural, those natural moments that feel real because I find if I'm trying to get people to do things again because I missed a shot, it ends up feeling a little bit, a little forced. And so I'm really searching and hunting for those little quick moments of energy where someone smiles or the water drips just right. Oh, wow. 
Yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is great, Nick. Okay, so pace with them here, Nick. For our setup here, communication-wise, it's so important between the direction that we're traveling for camera movement. So we've got the Raven Eye on the bottom of the Ninja 5 Plus, wirelessly transmitting over to an iPad we have mounted here. So that way, uh, operating the boat, you can actually get a sense for the feel of the movement and maybe what the camera operator is trying to do. Flying a setup this small on a gimbal, uh, I prefer it. It allows me to easily manipulate the lens and use the gimbal with one hand. The second that I need two hands to operate a gimbal, it changes the experience for me because I like getting my wides quickly and then bracing it in and getting some tights and going wide again. And being able to change the focal length on the gimbal with a nice small light setup is it just allows you to get a lot of coverage quickly. And when you're in that short little golden hour sunrise moment, sometimes you just don't have that time to change the lens. So a nice small light setup like this is just, it's awesome. Let's, uh, let's head on to the next location. This is going incredible. The sun is just like shining through perfectly on the light on the waterfall, making this amazing mist. This is kind of what high resolution is really best suited for is really high detail scenes. And this, this right here, these shots are just gonna be, I mean, they're awesome. I'm just, I'm so excited. This is so good. Currently in the process of uh, charging up this uh, mountain, it's one of the easiest access points to some, some quick alpine that has a great look to it. I love shooting up here. And uh, we're trying to get up there for sunset and our talent's gonna meet us up there. In a lot of ways, today is like the crescendo of the whole Canon R5 Atomos AK ProRes RAW shooting experience where this, today is the big final test. Can we do a whole shooting day just with what we carry in a backpack and actually get shots that I love? It's either back there or a spot up here that I can't see. consideration about exposing in ProRes RAW is that the headspace is just a touch different. I'm caring more about the native ISO and just preserving that because that's going to get us the best noise floor. And then I'm just kind of adding ND or taking it away and riding that aperture to end up at an image that I feel is exposed well. I'm trying to hang out in the upper area of the waveform because the higher out of the shadows you're able to have the image, the best noise performance you're going to get out of that final file. So one of the things that I'm kind of curious about solving from like a passion project standpoint is like, how do I create an intersection of client work and also my passion, which is shooting great outdoor stories. So that way they both can benefit because sometimes I have ideas that just like take more resources to pull off. And uh, it's hard to justify that personal investment. But if I can, if I can make the two align and I can shoot stuff for clients while I'm out shooting my passion, like, on this project, I'm I'm pouring my heart into this short film that we're working on, and I I'm obsessing about the little details because I care about it. This is like, this for me is why I do this. And then the additional layer is that while we're out here shooting some of these nature plates, like a, a beautiful shot of these mountains for me, I can license that and I I can make good money on that over and over again. So I don't normally include helicopters in my passion projects, but what we're trying to do here is that the investment into the helicopter time, if I can get four shots that I really like. And if I license those four, that can really help offset the, the investment into the helicopter time. And that's one of the massive benefits of shooting 8K ProRes RAW is that those files as a licensable asset to me are worth a lot more to whoever I'm licensing them to. So that means I can get more money for them. That means they're more flexible. That means it's more likely 
to be a worthwhile use of my time to actually go flying. So that's what we're gonna try to pull off here. I've talked too much. Let's go flying. Okay, we're gonna fire. Clear. I'll be honest, importing the footage, I was a little bit nervous how editing the 8K would go because it's, I mean, it's 8K ProRes RAW. Like that's a, that's a big file. Uh, I'm getting buttery smooth playback out of the gate with no transcoding, no, nothing special. I'm just importing the SSD and I'm able to start editing immediately. I don't have to do anything crazy complicated to make them look lovely. I can just put my normal color process over top and it just looks great straight off the camera, which is such a relief to me. And if I've experienced it before where I've just messed up my settings on location for what I ended up wanting to communicate in the edit. And if I want to, I can go under the hood a little bit more and manipulate and kind of press and squeeze that image around and move that raw data to kind of maybe fit the vision that I had a little more. Massive activity day from sunrise to sunset. That's a, Ooh. that's a wrap. Yes. Yeah. We all stayed awake. Yes. It's been a great day. <laughs> and I, I know we got good shots when my like face hurts after the heli flight. <laughs> I, I got this big grin the whole time. Mm -hmm. What did you think about your first time shooting 8K ProRes RAW? I was expecting to like run into some hiccups where I realized, oh, this workflow is too cumbersome. Because uh, I'm used to thinking, okay, resolution is expanding, it's getting more, and that's gonna mean, you know, on a post side, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pay the price later and it's gonna be so, so much of a hassle. Uh, that was not my experience. In a lot of ways, it just fit right into what I was already doing. And that's encouraging because, I, I mean, as much as I care about the story, I also really care about the technical. and. It's the convergence of the two that get me really excited because when we've got great tools, then we can do good work with them. And for me, being able to like take a powerful system like this and actually get amazing footage and being able to edit it in my same workflow. Like I used to be intimidated by going higher in resolution just because I was worried about the workflow hassle of these massive files. The, what, what am I do to my computer? Like it's just gonna slow it down to molasses and I can't edit it. I was so nervous about that. But the fact that I can load up 8K ProRes RAW into a laptop and immediately edit it, like that's, that's kind of the dream, right? And especially having it in, I think the camera package that I've been shooting with is like this, this package right here is 5.3 pounds, 2.4 kilograms. And like, this is an 8K ProRes RAW package and I can adapt any lens onto the RF mount. It's just, all of this is kind of like, it's, it's exciting because this is what we've been like dreaming about and asking for, a system this powerful, this small, adaptable, and, and we have it. And that's, it's, it's exciting. If we got results like this that I love so much from our first experience using it, I mean, it can only just expand from here to every other product that we work on and just get better and better. And this has been a really incredible event. Thank you so much for joining us, Levi. And to you, Trevor, thank you for joining us all the way from Australia. Cheers, thanks guys. This has been both uh, very interesting and a lot of fun. And it's been amazing seeing all of the behind the scenes, hearing more about your process, and of course, seeing the finished documentary. And we look forward to seeing you again at our next event. Bye.